Early 2004 was kind of a golden age for a lot of sports games. Not only did you have the EA Sports titles that had a lot of love and care put into them, but you also had the wacky games, the street style games, the arcade style games that were being made and were very successful and very loved. And today I'm going to talk about my favorite video game in that era easily. Now, I don't know what game I'm going to use in the thumbnail to like get people's attention, but I like to play pranks sometimes. So today we're talking about NBA Ballers. Now, NBA Ballers was published in early 2004, actually before NBA Live 2005 came out, NBA Ballers came out, which is something that like doesn't sound true, but it is. I looked it up. Now, NBA Ballers had some of my favorite elements from any street style game added to an NBA game. And this is coming from someone that isn't the biggest fan of NBA Jam. Now, as someone, I'm 28 right now. As I make this, I'm 28. I never really got the fun part of NBA Jam because whenever I'd play in an arcade, I'd only be able to play a quarter of it. So I never really got to play a full game of NBA Jam. When the video games for NBA Jam started coming out, where it was on Xbox 360 or Xbox, it wasn't appealing enough to me because we already had NBA Ballers and NBA Street. So I appreciate that NBA Ballers has some NBA Street style elements. NBA Ballers kind of has its own flavor to it that makes it stand out from the other games. One thing that really stands out in NBA Ballers is character. This game is oozing with character, with flair, with swagger, with pizzazz, with any other adjective you want to name it. NBA Bowler starts off with a great intro song that kind of gets you accustomed to what you're going to see. You're going to see half court street ball style one on one offense and the gameplay is very intricate and there's actually more strategy than it looks, but the game is really fun, really quick and easy games and it's so much of a good time dude if you're new here welcome in and if you know me welcome back thank you guys for everyone that's liking subscribing commenting putting these videos on reddit i appreciate you guys uh it's free it helps out the channel we have been growing this channel very well over the last couple of months and i appreciate each and every one of you we're going to continue and talk about nba ballers some more now nba ballers has some nfl blitz elements to it but not entirely so in NBA Ballers, you have the ability to foul and you, you get up to five fouls before the opponent gets free throws. So there is kind of a risk reward to this system. With these fouls, you can actually get the ball back. So if you really need to get the ball back, you can do a hard foul or a light foul to see if the opponent drops the ball. And here's the thing, in NBA Ballers, every possession counts. Every single possession counts. Sometimes, depending on the round, you're only playing to 11 by twos and threes. So is there that much room for error? Not really. And it also depends on the game mode that you're playing. And that's the other thing I'm going to get to. There are so many ways to tweak the game rules and make changes because that adds so much more variety to this game. And the gameplay loop doesn't really get old. You have, of course, 1v1. It's like one on one hoops, obviously. But then you have 1v1v1. So it's like you're going one on two. So not only do you have to worry about whoever's guarding, you, you have to worry about the person patrolling the paint, which is nice. The act of fool moves or like the skill moves or like the in one style tricks are good for two things. One, building up your house meter and two, being able to get around the court. You can use these moves and chain them into different combinations to get you to the spots that you really want to on the court. And that's why I feel like this game has a lot of fighting game inspiration because it's more than just the actual score. You could actually also try to do the bring down the house meter. Now the bring down the house meter was a meter, it was a yellow meter that you could fill up during the course of the match. And when it was all filled up, you could do a self lob off the glass that broke the backboard. Now, if you broke the backboard and broke the glass, you won the game. Didn't win just like the round. It's best two out of three usually. You won the game. But I think where the game stands out to me is the multiple modes in terms of like story mode, in terms of the TV tournament. The story mode is called Rags to Riches, where you start off as like a ball player that really isn't that good. And then through beating different opponents, you're able to acquire new skills, acquire new gear, 
and acquire new elements to the game that actually takes your gameplay to the next level, which I haven't talked about yet. So for example, if you're playing on a couple of levels and you get enough points, you can buy a hotspot. And the hotspot means that you can pick any spot on the court and you'll have a higher chance of making the shot. Now, that hotspot can be activated over time if you remember the spot. So you have to be sure to put it in a location where you can remember it. There are also other features that certain players in the game have that others don't. An example of this is you're able to pass the ball to a friend that's not on the court. Now, with this pass the ball to the friend, if you lose your dribble, you're able to pass it and get the ball back. And you can only the, the friend can only hold it for a certain amount of time. And then they have to like just toss the ball back in the court with the pass to friend element. Their friend could like throw you an alley-oop. Your friend could give the ball back to you, etc., etc. I think the coolest one is that certain players are allowed to legally goaltend in this game. Let's say uh, Ben Wallace, you're playing NBA ballers as Ben Wallace, and he's allowed to legally goaltend. Whereas uh, Steve Nash, even if Steve Nash was able to get up that high, which he can in this game, uh, goaltending is still something that he can't do legally, but Ben Wallace could. Some NBA players in the game have the ability to pass to a friend. But again, these are all abilities that you're able to buy with the rags to riches game mode. So by the end of the story, you're able to have a really fleshed out, unstoppable NBA ballers player. And there are so many cool customization options in this game. So there's always something to strive for, whether it's a new hairstyle or new clothes or a new chain or buying something for your house or yeah, upgrading something for you. Yeah buying something for your house or buying a friend to pass the ball to. There's so much that you can do. Now, the other way to earn credits and earn money to buy things is the TV tournaments. And the TV tournament is a gauntlet. So you're able to play NBA players. And sometimes they have a, like, a really cool theme to it where it's like you're playing the rookies or you're playing Eastern Conference greats and stuff like that. And I will tell you, some of these levels are really difficult. To this day, some of these levels are actually really challenging because they keep changing the rules. So there's a rule that you can have, a modification that you can have where five fouls actually ends the game. You can't foul f more than five times. And that's the thing with NBA ballers is that even though at its core, it's just street basketball, the level tweaks make you change your strategy and always offers a new challenge, especially depending on which basketball player that you pick. And I think that that's something that really stands out from other video games in that uh, arena. I remember there were certain games that like really annoyed the crap out of me. I'm telling you, there was one mode where you have to win by bringing down the house, which means that the, the round is untimed, but you have to pull off so many different combos and play basically perfect NBA ballers basketball to be able to bring down the house and end the game. That's tough in and of itself, especially depending on your computer because the computer difficulty never really never really seemed to be the same it always felt that there were some weird difficulty spikes which were cool because i don't want the same easy difficulty um from tournament to tournament however the unpredictability of it is something that i will never forget in gaming now the coolest thing about nba ballers in my opinion goes beyond the actual gameplay and beyond the actual game itself the NBA inside stuff feature in NBA ballers is one of the coolest things that any video game has implemented ever. And when I say that there is so much NBA history put into this video game, I mean it. So if you remember the show NBA inside stuff with Ahmad Rashad, uh, he would go all around the NBA. It's like 60 minutes, but not serious and like for the NBA. And I say that in terms of the fact where he'll like go somewhere, he'll interview a player or it's just a real fun like feature kind of thing. And all of those clips, a lot of those clips, a lot of those NBA inside stuff clips are in the game and some of them are unlockable. It's a really cool time capsule to see uh, just the state of the NBA in the early uh, 2000s, especially if you guys weren't alive to watch. I don't really know the demographic of the people that watch these videos. I know it fluctuates, but NBA ballers playing this game in the early 2000s NBA, where you had like Allen Iverson, Kobe Bryant, Carmelo Anthony just going into the league. There was just something so cool about that era. And this game is the ultimate time capsule for it. And there was something so cool about 
having different levels and being able to play at like Tim Duncan's house and stuff like that. This game had character. This game had an endless supply of collectibles, stuff to unlock. I still have this game to this day and I haven't unlocked everything yet. Like there's so much work to do in this game, but this game never makes it feel like it's a chore to try to unlock these things, which is really cool. And lastly, on that front, NBA Ballers has a treasure trove of cheat codes. It's something called phraseology. Now this is something, now back in the day when cheat codes in video games were a thing, like were a way more popular thing than they are now, there were websites that helped you with these cheat codes. And I remember going on gamewinners.com and looking up every NBA ballers code and using it to unlock whatever I could. Also, a cool thing in NBA Ballers is that they have this thing where you can like hit certain buttons to try to get at new um, cheat codes for the game. Like you could enter a certain combination for like big head mode or whatnot. The only drawback of this is that that screen where you could enter in like certain cheat codes or whatever goes by really fast and you have to be like really perfect to try to input certain things. And it's something that I was never good at. So and that's one of those things where even if you knew all the combinations for these cheats, they're so hard to pull off. I think that that's one of the biggest pet peeves about this game. The other thing about this game that was a drawback was the loading screens. The loading screens were very long, like PSP level long. However, the game's graphics, attention to detail, the move meter, uh, the gameplay just made it all worth it in the end. Now, NBA Ballers came out with a sequel that wasn't as popular as the first one. I'm going to be honest, I haven't really played it in a while, but this game really reflects on the beauty of having so many other different game franchises and series, whether it's NBA Street. And all these video games companies were competing to add so many things to do in each game that it was really beautiful. And no matter which of those companies won, we as the gamers won. And as you can see, NBA Ballers packed so much love, detail, so many things to try to achieve in this game, so much detail, uh, so many challenges for you to try to unlock. It's easy to see when a video game has so much care put into it versus when a video game is released and it feels a little bit soulless, dry, and dull and NBA Ballers is definitely not one of them. This is a game that I want to come back, and I, but I know that I don't think Midway exists anymore. This is a game I would want to come back easily. I would mod it. It would be so cool. I think that this is the game that would really pop off because this feels like NBA 2K My Park, but fun. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, thank you guys for watching to the end of the video. Again, please like, subscribe, comment, share. Thank you guys for following me and for the next video, feel free to comment whatever video topics you want me to talk about, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye!